Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the AV8B. It is February 2020 and we're looking at the new derivative of the ATHS and the CAS page slash CAS briefing. ATHS, Automatic Target Handoff System. Sounds fancy, all it means in DCS is a way of taking target positions from the F10 menu and transferring them to the CAS database in your aircraft. And while the CAS briefing is a system that allows us to go and then edit those targets and the information about those targets in the CAS page. To show you how we could use this, I'm going to go for a full but simple setup of I'm going to be on the ground. We're going to take off and then use this CAS briefing to go and bomb some targets that we've got down here. The targets are five separate pieces of armour. I'm currently starting on the ground. Note at this point, it is much easier to do the ATHS on the ground than it is to do in the air. You can do it in the air, but there are extra steps required. So just please bear that in mind. First things I need to do is add an IP and an egress waypoint. So IP, initial point, I'm going to set as a waypoint. I'm going to set it approximately five miles east of the target. So that will be a five mile ingress from the east. Egress, I want to be five miles to the south of the target. I'm going to put that in and I'm going to put that as waypoint two. Uh, the altitude doesn't really matter, I don't think, of these waypoints, but I'm going to put them just something that were a bit more sensible. So that's our initial point. That there is our egress point, that's the target. In the cockpit now, we need to add the targets. So this simulates target information in a pre-planned method coming from a JTAC, someone on the ground, some sort of uh, intelligence source. So our intelligence source is a satellite. Here are my targets. The way that we do this is we click on mark point there and mark point label. First, we need to mark the target area. So just put a blank way, uh, mark point, click it there. Next, create a new mark point, which is going to be our first target point. That's going to be him there. Call it capital Tango 01, must be that. New mark point, target 2, Tango 02. And I think you can see where we're going with this. 05, that is the target area marked up and all five targets marked up. Open up our kneeboard, right shift and kilo. Next, change the kneeboard pages. You can use that or that. Right kneeboard page, target list, currently not loaded. It says there, press right shift, right alt and eight to load the target points. Right alt, right shift and eight. Our target points are now loaded through. Here is their index, that's what I called the mark points. Here is the MGRS coordinates. Here is the elevation in feet ASL and here is the DCS record number of that point. Now we're gonna go look on our CAS page. Main menu, CAS recall and here is our list of 18 points we have in our cast memory one two three four five are our five five points because we've loaded this on the ground it's automatically assigned each of these points to an actual harrier target target one two three four and five if we were doing this in the air we would have to assign the targets ourselves manually hence i suggest doing this on the ground here is the dcs code here is the UTM or the MGRS. Here is the time associated with the creation of that point. Note we've got apron, B mode and send. These are not functional at the moment. We think you'll be able to, in the future, send these, these lists, these target lists between Harriers, but we can't do it at the moment. Let's go back to the CAS page with CAS. This allows us to load up each of those individual points and change items associated with them that is going to give us all the information we need about attacking the target. We can tell which one we've got loaded up because it says at the top there that is our DCS reference. If we wanted to cycle through them, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and back to the first one. So let's go and edit what we need to edit. Turn it into edit mode by repressing CAS. We will be editing the one where the star is. Let's take that up to the top. First, we need to specify regarding this target what is our IP, our initial point. And we're going to tell it by using a waypoint. And if you remember, we've created waypoint 1 for this. So we're going to go to our UFC, type in waypoint 1, enter. It's selected a waypoint with the name of waypoint 1, and it is actually waypoint 1. Because it knows where waypoint 1 and it knows where the target is, it's automatically created bearing. Bearing is the bearing from waypoint 1 to the particular target. We also get POS B, that is the bearing from me, my current position, to that target. Next is going to be the range automatically calculated again from IP, waypoint 1, to the target and me to that target. Now, I can go in and change these manually if, if I want, but because of the way we've done it, everything's been calculated automatically. Elevation, 
done automatically through the ATHS, but again, we could change it on the UFC if we wanted. Description. What type of thing is the target? Well, let's go look. Personnel. Weapon. Mortar. Whatever that says. Artillery. Armor. Vehicle. Uh, I guess it's going to be armor. Next, the lat long of the target. This has come through from the MGRS of the target from the ATHS. It's done automatically. If you want to modify it, you can modify it in the UFC. Next, how is this particular target going to be marked? Uh, we can change that with the up and down here. Is it going to be no marking? Is it going to be smoked? Is it going to be flared? Is it going to be mirrored? Is it going to be gale? Is it going to be light? Is it going to be panels? Is it going to be fire? Is it going to be laser? And so on whole list of stuff there i'm just going to put laser on this i'm not actually going to laser it but i'm just showing that we could mark it with a laser a third party jtec laser and in that case uh, if we wanted to zip across here change the code to one i don't know five eight eight enter there and now with this target it's going to be marked with a laser with a code of 1588. Okay, now remember, we're not actually changing anything here. All we're doing is changing the record associated with this target. What you would have to do then is go and make sure that someone out there, a JTAC, is actually doing the laser on 1588. Next, friends, when it comes to nine lines and whatnot, then we need to ensure that we've told the pilot where friendly forces may be. So, in this case, let's pretend that there are some friends to, let's say, the north by uh, I don't know 100 feet so we need to tell the pilot about that friend and we can change that with up and down there there to the north and what distance are the friends away I've forgotten what I said now a couple of hundred feet I think distance 200 uh, bugger. enter associated with this target the, the friends are northbound and or north and 200 feet away egress the best way of doing this is by setting a waypoint there are other ways we can do this so if we look over here we could set a direction and a distance if we wanted to do that that's a pain in the butt instead i'm going to use my pre-made waypoint i can have up to three pre-made waypoints for the egress i'm going to go with just the first one cp1 already selected it's going to be waypoint two enter the egress is one single waypoint it has a name of waypoint two and it is actually waypoint two next remarks if you all probably know what nine nine line codes are so you'll know what remarks remarks are but they are not working at the moment it will just allow you to add some text when it is finally in i imagine so one correction this is not 200 feet this is 200 meters next time on target this allows us to associate a mission time with a particular target this is used to deconflict flights so that we don't have a harrier coming in at the same time as another harrier on the same target it, this can get a little complex so we're going to do a separate video on time of target we'll just leave that for now and that's us done so that's all of the information set up and associated with if you like target what well, it is target one and that reference there we're going to save that active good and ready to go good doctrine would say that we would take the time and go and fill out the information for the other four points however i'm an extremely lazy man i'm not going to do it but you should do it let's rock and roll Okay, first task, let's just go and set our bombs up ever so quickly. Master armor on. Next, we're going to get our teapot on the go. Ping. Nav mode. Let's navigate to waypoint one, otherwise known as the IP. Okay, we've reached waypoint one. Air to ground mode. Here, we're going to want to go to our HSD. We have the ability of cycling through waypoint 1, waypoint 2, target point 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Target point 1 first of all, target designate. Next we're going to get a good look with our teapot. So TDC on, standby off and you can see that it's automatically slewed to target point 1 which came from the ATHS and there is our target. Unpause, rolling in from the IP now, let's go and get him. CCRP, auto symbology all up and ready to go. Press and hold, weapon release, weapon away. And just watch our teapot for the boom 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 and he's down not bad we next get to waypoint uh, sorry target point two and we're going to i can get here okay now we can roll on on the next target there's no weapon release on the way watch the target i'll get destroyed I'll go with that target three designate whoops designate five seconds out i've left this one a little late but let's try it anyway bomb it away hopefully i'll get somewhere near it missed haha <laughs> damn well you know what i'm gonna pretend that we hit it i'm away fingers crossed final target five designate in we go weapon release boom lovely you know what that's good enough for me off you go bet back to nav mode 
going to cancel our currently selected target. We're going to change to waypoint 2. And we now need to fly to egress. And that's waypoint 2 here. And Roscoe Mike, um, I think I kind of kind of bent round in an arc like that, whereas I should have kind of turned sharply and gone straight south, but that's just the way it goes. Uh, that's all I'm going to share with ATHS and the CAS briefing and the CAS page as it stands. I hope that was useful and see you later.